Today we, we understand that you're going to be looking at numerous drafts of the regulations from, from numerous cannabis organizations. Uh, we hope that as you look forward to writing the different rules and, and stuff that go along with state question 788 that you will constantly refer back to 788 and that everything that you all write as far as regulations or that any governing body will write as far as regulations will be in complete alliance with what 788 is and how 788 is written. Uh, Overregulation has been the biggest fear and why this room is so full right now. Uh, 788 was, was very clear in what it permitted and what it didn't permit and that's where those regulations may need to uh, become more clear uh, but uh, there's no reason to go against what 788 says. We don't just come to you as activists who meet with patients, we're also, also patients. So I want to give you just a brief. In 14, in 14 years, I've had seven surgeries on my spine. Four years ago, I was on 9,865 pills a year, all prescribed by my doctor. My entire life fell apart. I decided to start breaking the law. Unfortunately, I had no choice. Currently, I'm on less than 700 pills a year. That's in four years. I expect to be completely off of these opioids in a relatively short amount of time. As soon as this is enacted, I'll be able to plant my own, provided we don't overregulate, and I'll be able to treat myself. So when you guys look at this, keep in mind we are patients. We are dying, and we will get our medicine. And overregulation is going to cost us money we can't afford. Cannabis is special because it affects something called the endocannabinoid system. That regulates your entire body, it regulates your immune, feeding your craving, your cognitive response. So, and this isn't taught in any major university yet, right? So, University of Mississippi, the only place where they've been growing medical cannabis since 1968, is just considering this fall teaching a class on the endocannabinoid system to their PharmD PhDs. So, how does a physician treat someone? Well, they got to know about the endocannabinoid system, and once they begin to know about this endocannabinoid system, I think we're going to see some real cool advances in medicine. Because again, it's your master regulatory system. If I gave you a master screwdriver and said, you can address issues of pain or inflammation or autoimmunes or cancers, that's a damn powerful screwdriver. So again, that's what we're talking about. That's why it needs to be in the hands of physicians under proper regulation and all that, but it really needs to be in the hands of physicians. We have people that are in our organization that are from a wide variety of backgrounds. We are nonpartisan. We do not care if you're a Democrat, if you're a Republican, if you're independent, if you're a Libertarian. That is not our concern whatsoever. Don't care what race, creed, religion you come from. Really don't. Not whatsoever. What I care about, though, is if you could look my son at six years old or my daughter at two years old who are perfectly healthy in their heart, who were given a rough shot in this life for whatever reason, that they had a mama and daddy who knew that they had brain disorders and problems in gestation at 18 weeks, and we said, God gives you what he gives you, and we're going to deal with it the best we can. So if my wife and I and my family are so committed to the quality of life, the preservation of life, that the words that we are endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, and the first one that is stated is life. So today, I am here for the patients, not for business. We all work together with one thing in mind, the patients of Oklahoma and doing what's great for Oklahoma, moving us into a position where we are successful and we take care of our own.